Hi everybody, this is Chris. Thank you for joining me. So in today's video, I'm going to show you a very fun way, a very easy technique to make uh, cards or even paper flowers using toilet paper. So, I mean, this is so fun to do, so easy. We all have toilet paper. I mean, that's obvious, right? Who doesn't have that? So you will be able to do backgrounds for your cards in no time. Uh, you're gonna need a little uh, time to make everything dry, but other than that, uh, no specific tools except your usual embossing folders, maybe some dies for the flowers and your regular inks, but all card maker or scrapbooker already have all of these. So these are the different effects I have, again, using uh, toilet paper, and I really had a lot of fun doing this. So I'm gonna show you, there are two ways of doing it, and I'm gonna tell you which one I prefer. And this is this is one of the little flowers I have made, and I'm gonna make one with you as well. So the first thing you're gonna need, of course, is toilet paper. So any brand will do for this, and don't worry about the design that you might have on yours. Let me zoom out a little bit. So there you go. Some toilet papers here, I have little polka dots, and you can see them in real life. It doesn't matter because when you're gonna put this into your bossing folder, the design that you had on your paper towel, on the uh, toilet paper is going to disappear. So uh, for my embossing folders, for the size of my embossing folders, I am just going to use two sheets of toilet paper. So I'm gonna rip this apart. And there are two ways, but I'm gonna tell you my favorite one. So, and there's a little dog here and polka dots. So you're just gonna layer them as evenly as you can. And I'm gonna put a third layer. Make some tries, maybe go up to four or five layers and then put them into your um, embossing folder and see how it works. I'm putting maybe one more here. And I'm not putting more than two layers because it's already a bit bigger than my embossing folder. So the first one, the first time I used this, I tried, I used, I know you're gonna need a um, spray bottle filled with water, just tap water. Then you're gonna spray it onto your paper and you need to put enough so it's going through all the layers. Turn it around, do the same thing on the back. It shouldn't be completely soaked and dripping, but you must be able to do this, flatten it out, and make sure it's gonna be wet because this is how your paper is going to bond to itself. So add a little bit more. Here I'm working on another sheet of paper in the background. Use a, maybe a plastic sheet underneath or foil if you wish, or a plate, that would do too. And make sure it's wet enough I think I need a little bit more. So the first time I tried this, once it was all wet and a little bit soaky, I first put that into my embossing folder and run it through my uh, cutting machine. Then the second time I tried, I tried it differently, which means at this stage when it was all damp, I just let it to dry on a flat surface. And actually I'm gonna show you the difference so do I still have all of these? Yeah, I think so. So when you put it into your embossing folder and then leave it a dry, it's going to buckle. You see this? It's really not straight at all. It's buckling and it's all wavy. But if you do this after it's dry and put it when it's dry under your embossing folder, it's much straighter. So it's not a very big deal because when you're gonna put your double-sided adhesive on the back and then stick it to your card, it's gonna work. But I think it's I think it's still better if you can just use it as flat as possible. So again, once this piece is dry, then you will put it onto your embossing folder and it's gonna look perfect. Just look at this one. Okay, it doesn't seem much right now, but let me show you here. This is a wood grain and it looks absolutely gorgeous, just like paper wood, and it's even lighter. Look at these two. And you're going to ink them just the way you would do after using an embossing folder, except that I went into the nooks and crevices, so you have the colors everywhere. I didn't stop just on the surface, that's the way I wanted to go. So I'm gonna use this flower here, 
And this is the part that was off my embossing folder, okay, because that's the size of it, okay. So if you have a bigger embossing folder, you might use a little lo longer piece there. Then I'm going to use some inks, so I'm going to use some Distress Inks. And let me go, what colors am I going to use? I think I'm going to stay with the pink and the oranges, I like that. Okay, so I'm going to go from my lightest color and I'm going to use this one, this pink. This one is Victorian Velvet. And I'm going to start just going over it. I like this muted color. I think it's really nice for spring. It's really a nice color. So that's one here. I'm going to go darker with this other color here, which is worn lipstick. Uh, let me see which color am I going to use. Yeah, this one. And I'm using different, um, you know, makeup brushes to do this. This is a sponge. I love these. Actually, I think they're my best friend now because they work lark like a charm. And you want you can go just and stay on top of it. I'm going also on the non-raised area because that's the way I want to go for. But you can choose either way. Um, okay, this is fine. I'm going to go with a little bit of purple. And try to blend in like this a little bit. And more here. And blend the colors with the two pinks. And maybe go back a little bit up there. That maybe I think I put a little bit too much. I'm going to go back with my um, with my light pink there and try to blend a little bit more the colors. Um, let me see. I think I put some purple in there. I shouldn't have done that. Let me scrape it off. Sorry for the squeaky. Going to go back with the pink and try to blend this part here a little bit more. All right, it's far from being perfect, but I think you got the gist. Let me replace this one. I think it's really mm, looking weird. So let's go and take this one. I think this one is much better, okay? And I like the wood grain as well. So that's another background. Then what you need to do is take your scissors, and just cut off all the excess you have here and you can trim it down to the size of your card and it's going to be just perfect and it's really lightweight and because of the pressure that you put later when either it was dry or before drying out is going to make all your layers stick together and I just used water if you feel like using a little bit of water and a little bit of glue you can do that too, but I don't think it's very useful. And there you go, and that is really perfect to go under a card. Now, what you can also do, since you have your paper, and that's what I have already done, is that I have made, I have cut out, with my regular dies, I have cut out some flowers, and these using polka dots. So, again, what I have done is that I've inked up the, the whole sheet of paper, because I think it's easier and much quicker to do. So you first ink it up, and you can see that I wasn't regular in my inking because I had these flowers in mind. So I have some lighter or darker colors onto my flowers. I'm gonna take a little bit of glue. I'm gonna take the this one first, and I'm gonna apply some glue here into the center of my flower. And then I'm going to use this middle piece there, and I'm, of course, offsetting my petals. And then I'm going to use a third layer in here, a darker piece. I think I need to zoom in a little bit. There you go. Again, offsetting 
the petals. Maybe I could put a third layer, a fourth layer, I mean, underneath. Which one am I going to use? I don't know. Maybe no, I'm going to put one into the center. I'm going to use this one. And when you're going to run this through your die cutting machine, it's going to flatten them out a little bit. Okay, press down. I'm going to put a bead in the center. I might use um, maybe an orangey color. I'm going to use this one there. And fluff it up. And it's really lightweight. It's even lighter than your regular lightest paper. And look at this. How gorgeous. Can you see the 3D effect? It's impeccable. It's absolutely gorgeous. Lightweight. So cheap. And you can do a whole bunch of these at a time. Just sprinkle some water, spray some water on the front, on the back to make sure it's down that all the pieces are going to stick together. And then beautiful flowers. And if they do, maybe the layers come apart here. It doesn't matter. I think it's going to give even more fluff to it. I think it's so nice. You should give it a try. And then put it onto your background. Look on this green background, what it does. I need to trim this piece apart. Look at this. And make your background. This could be a fantastic background for a cards man, uh, a man's card, I'm sorry. But the flowers of this color really go out so much. It pops out. So I really enjoy this. So that was a very quick tutorial, but I thought I would share it with you because you would never think about using toilet paper to make cards, but why not? Previously, we have used napkins. That was also very fun, but there is another way to do it. So if you like this video, please give me some thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button to get all the notifications as soon as I um, post another video. And don't forget to share on social medias. Talk to this channel with your friends and neighbors and everybody. Thank you so much for sharing and stopping by. See you soon for other tutorials and see you soon. Take care.